see why we rotate the axis. See? The whole purpose of rotating the axis this way is so that the acceleration is along the x direction. And you don't have to talk about AX and AY. You no longer have AY if you rotate the axis. You see? So I think this is pretty much a dead end. We, that's, that's the only place we can go with that. We're kind of stuck. So now let me rotate the axis, show you that this takes about 30 seconds. Okay. So a little bit more maybe, but much easier now. So here's what we do. We take the object, and we, if we know that it's accelerating this way, we do it like this, we do it like this, and we break the x and y component this way, x and y, we, so in, in linear algebra they call this x prime, y prime, you know, the rotated axis. Uh, so now we're going to say some of the forces in the x direction is zero, some of the forces in the y direction is zero, I mean sorry, uh, some of the forces in x direction is ma, now notice the acceleration is only going to be in the x direction. So I don't even have to put max. I just put ma. And then the sum of the forces in the y direction, along this y direction, in the rotated y direction, there is no acceleration. So it's zero. So this is why now you see why we rotate them. We could uh, put here some of the forces in the x prime, in the y prime uh, reference frame. So now, in uh, what we have to do, notice the normal force is already in the y prime direction. It's this way. So we don't have to break the normal force into components. We just have to break the mg into components. So we have to take this, uh, this y prime axis like that, and we have to find this angle. Okay, well, what is that angle equal to? Well, we've got to go through a similar argument like before. If this thing is like this and this thing is like this, if this is uh, 35 degrees, then this is 55, then this is 35. So it's a similar argument to what we just did for the normal force. So now the, this component of the weight is mg uh, cos. And then this component of the weight is, uh, let's rewrite this here. This component of the weight is mg sine. A lot of times I call this the parallel component of the weight, and I call this the perpendicular component of the weight. What I mean by that is this is the component of the weight parallel to the incline, which is the component of the weight that causes the block to go down. Right? This is the one that makes the block go down. So this is the more important one, I guess, you can say. You see? This is the W pair perpendicular is the component of the weight that is balanced out by the normal force. You see? So, uh, Fx prime is going to be mg sine theta. And then in the y direction, you're going to have normal force n and then uh, minus mg cosine theta is equal to zero. So uh, the normal force is balanced out by mg cos theta. So m and m cancel, and a equals g sine theta. And that's a general equation for any angle. Notice that the mass, it didn't depend on the mass. The mass canceled out. So now we can put our angle in. Notice how much easier that is than having to do AX, AY, squaring them, adding them, square rooting them, much, much better. Okay. Now, uh, if the problem asked what is the apparent weight of the uh, block, what is uh, apparent weight? Remember, we talked about that last time. The apparent weight is the what it feels, the normal force. So that's the normal force. So then you would go 4 times 9.8 
times cosine of 35. So whatever that gives you. So I really like this method, the rotated method, because one equation gives you the normal force, the other equation gives you the A without having to uh, solve for AX and AY.